Are you in it? To win it? On this episode of Title Tuesdays. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Title Tuesdays. I'm your referee title agent, Kevin Thatcher, the owner and CEO here at Independence Title, also known as your Title King. We're in these referee outfits because we have decided that in this business, we are an unbiased third party here to get your deal across the finish line, to make sure that we guide your deal to get to closing. And today we have a fantastic episode. We're gonna interview Camillo, who is one of our clients. Thanks for coming down, I appreciate it. And uh, today we're gonna talk to the new investors. We said, are you in it to win it in this game? And we're gonna cover Camillo's story. We're gonna talk a little bit uh, to the new investor that's out there because we know that we're in a little bit of a market correction. We're not gonna say declining market, but we're, in, we're having a market correction. And I wanna cater to those people that are on the fence, they're thinking about getting into it, and I wanna prove to them that they can put their mind to it and, and do anything. So thanks for coming down. Awesome, man, awesome, anytime. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Absolutely, so don't forget to subscribe below. I wanna make sure you subscribe to these videos, click the red subscribe button, and make sure you set the alerts. And if you'd like to get our videos early, there's always the VIP text option, which is where you can text the word title to 31996. You see that flashing up above us here. Uh, and make sure you text in to get the videos directly to your smartphone. So let's get in it to win it on this episode of Title Tuesday. So let's talk a little bit, tell them a little bit about who you are, where you started, and then we'll get into a little bit about where you've come from there. Awesome, so the long story short, I come from Colombia, South America, and I used to, uh, I was born and raised in that country in the 1990s was, was probably one of the most dangerous times in my country. Today's a beautiful country, I highly recommend it to anybody. But we had to leave out of there because of a violent situation and economical situation. We came to this country looking for an opportunity. My parents have always been business owners. They've always made money, but they've never managed it. So when I came to this country, I'm like, what's going on with my parents? Why is it that they're always thriving and selling and making money, but they're not keeping anything? They're getting by every single day. And that, I, I was obsessed with it. I was 14 years old, and I think I, that I matured early uh, in that situation, and I started reading a lot. And I came across this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by Robert Kiyosaki. I highly recommend that book to anybody who's starting in any business. And that got me to a cash flow 101 game. And that's the reason why my company name is Cash Flow Properties. That game changed my life. It changed the mentality, how I think, how I do business, how I uh, analyze at any opportunity it comes in is basically like a monopoly on steroids. I don't know if you've played it before. Yeah. It's like a monopoly on steroids. You get opportunities, you get big deals, you get little deals, but you understand a financial statement. You understand what a profit and loss is, you understand what a, uh, uh, assets and liabilities are, balance sheet is, and you understand, hey, this is a good opportunity, this is a bad opportunity. So I said, what if we start playing this game in real life? So I was, I was thinking during that game, and I played it like uh, in a hotel room with uh, like 30, 40, 50 people for a few months straight. And every time I kept thinking about that game, and I'm like, how come? Like one of the deals in the in the in the in the in the in the game is you pick up a, a card and you find a property and you can sell it for a big profit. So that I call it a rehab or a property that is bought under market value. You fix it up and you sell it for a big profit. The other thing about the game is renting properties. You acquire the property, you rent it, and you get the cash flow. But one thing that set my mind in that game is, if I don't have money, I was getting that card, but I can sell this card to somebody else. Hey, Kevin, you have some money in your table. Obviously, it's fake money, but how about I sell you this card for $2,000? That's a quick transaction. I never touched the property. I never fixed it up. I never closed on it. I just said, hey, I don't have a good deal. How about I sell it to you for a quick profit? So 2009, I started doing that. I started wholesaling. I started rehabbing properties. And a few years later, I was able to acquire rental properties. And uh, that's pretty much my story. I think I, I said in a few, a few minutes. <laughs> One of the things that I'm starting to think about is I wonder if the games that you used to go to were the games I used to host. I don't know where you used to go because I used to host years ago. I used to host cash flow games. That okay. was how I built part of my business on okay. the investor side. 
is we would get five or six games and we'd set up tables in a hotel room and we'd have food and drinks and, and we'd play the game. So it's, it's a fantastic game. I, I would highly recommend it as well. If your kids like Monopoly, now's the time to get them involved into cash flow because it's all about getting out of the rat race. Exactly. You know, exactly. the rat race is coming to work, getting a check, going home, spending your money, and coming back, rinse and repeat. And it's great for people. But for someone that wants to be entrepreneurial and, and wants to start their own business and wants to, to scale the things that they're doing, which it's not for everyone, there's only a small percentage that it's for, that's a great game for people to get in. You know, there's so many people that are watching this that they're scared, they're working a nine to five job, they, they don't know what to do. And, and here is a great case of a great client of ours that is doing it. He watched, a, he read a book, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book, he bought the game, he, played the game a little bit and then decided to play it in life. And just as you're talking about the game, I think it's fantastic because I, I hear all of those funnels. And that's what yes. I want to talk about a little bit, talking about you know different types of funnels because there's people on here that are going to go to one of these get rich quick seminars and they're going to talk about wholesaling deals. And the reality is, is yes, you can wholesale a deal for twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, but that's not realistic, right? I mean, yeah. that, that's not going to happen often, right? How often do you wholesale deals with large large problem yeah it's not common I mean sometimes you hit that home run but like I said in like in the game sometimes you get that really good card and sometimes you you have different exit strategies sometimes you, instead of you wholesaling it you keep it you keep it as a rental because that's a, such a great deal or you flip it you put a little touch on paint and a little here and there so instead of making the 30 you make the 50 you know something like that but it's not common it's not common the, the average Wholesale deal is much less than that, I would say. It's so it means you're going to have to scale it. So if you go to one of these Get Rich Quick seminars, we're going to talk about how to wholesale, and, and you're not going to be able to do it and make a living unless you're doing you know, five to ten deals a month. So now exactly. let, let's talk about profit funnels, because I think you're one of the few investors that I know that, that understands it, and clearly you, you played the game, right? And you're playing it in real life yes. to understand. So let's talk about funnel number one, which is the selling the contract so selling the contract is just a wholesale deal there's two ways of doing it obviously you can get more complicated uh but it's you doing a double closing or an assignment of contract is you finding the deal being the deal finding being being the deal finder being the bird dog so you find a great deal you connect it with a buyer who's looking to buy fix and sell or buy fix and rent the property who wants to buy a cash and you just flip it to them for for profit and it depends on how good of a good deal it is it's the profit that you're gonna make. If the deal has so much spread that the other person is gonna be able to have some meat in the bone, then your profit is gonna be larger. If it's a skinny deal where, yeah, it's a tight deal, the numbers are not just there, then you're gonna make a much lesser uh, profit or commission or however you call it, assignment fee or whatever. And what's but a good number for them to think of to do? So if that's one funnel of their income, what's a good number for them to focus on doing wholesale deals? I mean, a wholesale deal, could you can make anywhere between $3,000 and $7,000. That could be like a nice average. I'm not gonna lie to you, sometimes I've done wholesale deals where I make $500, but I've had the big wholesale deals like you were saying. Everything is a profit, and that's the beauty of this. You are not touching a property. You are not putting investment, you're not dealing with contractors when you're wholesaling, you're just putting buyer and seller together. And that's one of the quick tips that I wanted to give uh, the audience is when I started this business, somebody told me something that stuck into my mind is a wholesaler is a person that connects people, buyer, seller, and money. If you have a buyer's list, if you have a seller's list, and you have a money list, all you have to do is connect people, connect deals, connect people, and you're gonna make a profit one way or another. Awesome, awesome. So that's. Funnel number one, we're talking about wholesale deals, never touch the property, quick money. Sell the contract, make some quick money. Now let's go into the, the second funnel, which is where you're acquiring property and you know it needs a little bit of work, but you're not gonna keep it for a long time. Yeah, so that's the rehab, some people call them flips. Uh, so a rehab is you need money to purchase the property, obviously, you, you've mentioned uh, these a lot in your in your, uh, in your channel, and you need money to close on the property. You're gonna have some liability. You're gonna have to deal with contractors. You're gonna have to pull permits if the property needs to be renovated with permits. Uh, you're gonna have to hold it. You're gonna have to have insurance, taxes, uh, maintenance, utilities, repairs, all these things. But at the end of the day, after you set it, if you do the numbers right, you can make a nice 15 to 30% return on the money in four to six months, depending on how, how advanced you are. 
I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes the deals go for a year because permits are held back or sometimes if you make a mistake on the repairs, you go over budget and you're going to make less money than you expected. Uh, but sometimes you put the property in the market and you get, it's a great deal, it's a great property and you get so many offers that you actually make more than what you expected. Uh, it's about having the numbers tight and having the numbers ready and knowing what you're doing. And the key is learning how to buy. You, you, you make your money on the purchase and you collect it on the resale. Absolutely, so that's buy, fix, and sell. That's buy, fix, and And I, I think one of the things that, that people are wondering is why well, I don't have the money. And we know that you can find the money. Yeah. If it's a good enough deal, someone will give you the money. One of the things though, I do wanna caution the people that are watching, because it's not easy. You know, Camillo makes it sound very easy because he's been in this game for a long time. This is not easy. You can lose your shirt. Yeah. You can make mistakes. So I always say get a mentor. Get someone such as Camillo that maybe you have a deal that would be a great rehab. You want to partner with him. Uh, you go to a local real estate investment club and you find someone to partner with. Maybe someone that could put the money up or maybe someone that knows what they're doing. So you can kind of shadow and then you guys can split the profit. So that's the best way I think to get into that game because if you try and do it yourself and you don't have the experience and you don't have the money, you can get into a lot of trouble. Yeah, let me add to that a little bit. Uh, my first rehab deal, I didn't have any money, I didn't have any credit and I didn't have any experience. The way I did it, somebody told me is, find the deal first, find the money second. I found a great deal in Hollywood, Florida. It was a 3-1. For sixty thousand dollars, I thought I could sell it for one hundred and ten. It ended up selling for like one forty. It was a great market back in two thousand nine. But the point is, I didn't have the money, but I still put the property under contract. I went out. I had like twenty days to find the money, and I found the manager of a supermarket who has a lot of money but has no time. And I told him, "Hey, we're buying this property for sixty thousand dollars. The estimated repairs are going to be about twenty thousand dollars. There's about a thirty thousand dollar profit margin." You don't have to do anything, we'll do all the dirty work. All you need to do is put up the money, we'll split a 50-50. He agreed, that's how I came up with the money. And when we closed and when we gave him his investment back, he wrote down five thousand, two $5,000 checks. I thought, hey, that's a nice tip. No, that was two, he opened the doors for us. He said, buy two more properties. He gave us two $5,000 checks and he said, go, just get two more properties. It's amazing, it's amazing. You know, anyone can make money in this business as long as you put your mind to it and you do the research properly and, and, and get into it. So, so we talked about the two funnels. So we have wholesale, we have fix and flip, and now let's talk about the one that I feel, you know, some people wanna stay completely out of it and, and I'm a big uh, cheerleader of making sure that we're creating long-term wealth. Exactly. And one of the things I like to talk about are, and meet with investors that are keeping things long-term. Maybe getting a small amount, a little check every single month, but let's talk about the bigger picture and, and what that funnel looks like. Yeah, so that's uh, buying, fixing, and renting. Uh, why buying and fixing? Because again, if you're buying under market value, you're gonna get a much better deal. Uh, so the cash flow is better. Uh, you're gonna need a lot more cash. You're gonna have to buy the property, fix it up, and the money stays in there because like you said, you're gonna start receiving the little check little by little. But that's a true way to create wealth, in my opinion. Uh, I created my financial freedom before I turned 30 years old through owning a few rental properties. And what I did was uh, with the wholesales and the rehab, I was able to acquire some capital. With that capital, I put as a down payment with a hard money lender to buy the rental properties. And then after six months of the tenant living there, what I would do is refinance on the property. So I would cash out, pay off the hard money loan, get some of my money back and move on to the next deal. And the property still cash flows because you're moving your your hard money loan from a 12, 14% interest rate to a three, three and a half. Now it's gonna be about around 5% interest, but now it's gonna be fixed for 30 years. So the cash flow stays pretty much the same and you own the property, but you took all the money out. It's just the process of six months, eight months of dealing with the property. And now you start receiving the monthly cash flow every single month. And it's not easy. <laughs> if it was easy, everybody would be doing do. it. But it's just, it's just a great business. You know? Life is not easy, but you talked about financial freedom. And, and one of the things that I like to explain, because so many people always ask, well, what does financial freedom mean? Financial freedom doesn't mean you can retire. Financial freedom means that you have more money coming in than you have going out. Exactly. That's financial freedom. So by having enough rental properties, generating enough revenue to pay your bills and pay the expenses gives you financial freedom because you don't have to do anything 
but collect the rent. Now you're not gonna build your, your big net worth and your retirement. Uh, you're gonna add to your retirement, but you can't retire on that. But that's what financial freedom is, and, and it's small baby steps. So it's getting a couple of wholesale deals, doing a fix and flip, maybe a couple a year, and then starting to buy long-term rentals. At age 30, I mean, that's pretty impressive. You know, I got into the game early, I'm 40, and I got into the game when I was 26, and, and, and I love what I do. I, I truly do, I, I love it every single day to help people. But being able to do it at such a young age is amazing because I see people at these clubs that still can't figure it out. So, you know, his business is cash flow. That's his name, cash flow properties. And not only did he watch the game cash flow, but he bought properties that cash flow. So everything truly ties into that word cash flow for you. And I think it's fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I, I enjoy watching you know you and your lovely wife and just following your, your journey and in, in everything that you're doing. So um, thanks for sharing that with them. So you Thank got you, these Kevin. three funnels. That's the important part. And the last question I wanna ask you, and it's more because I wanna know, maybe not the viewers, what drives you to get up every day and continue to do it? Because you're doing a lot. You've got a lot on your plate. What drives you? My family, obviously. And I believe that if I create enough passive income where I can live so comfortable, uh, I can spend time, quality time with my family. I can travel with them. I don't have to chase a check every single month. Obviously, today, my rental properties pay my my expenses today but obviously I want more I want more of that because I don't want the money I want the freedom that that money and that income creates I want that freedom to be able to pick up my daughter from school when she starts going to school at 1 or 2 or 3 p.m. and not have to deal with work the rest of the day take her to the soccer games take her to, to the stadium I'm so excited about David Beckham Stadium oh my god I can't <laughs> we can have another talk about that but I, I want to take her to the stadium I want I, I want to I want to live that childhood childhood of hers with her you know taking her to the park and enjoying that quality time with her and I feel that if she turns five, six, seven years old where she's gonna start experiencing all these things, I wanna be there all the time. So that's what drives me every single day and that's what, that, that's what motivates me every single Amazing. day. Amazing, thanks for coming down. I'm gonna put Camilo's information below in the description. You see it up on the video. Uh, Camilo's an author, he's an investor. He, he hosts a YouTube channel just like we do. Uh, that has just tons of educational information because it's not about selling, it's about education. So thanks for coming down. Check him out, follow him on social media, follow what he's doing. You know, you need to find someone who's doing what you want to do in order to get there. So thanks for watching this episode of Title Tuesdays. My name's Kevin Thatcher, your referee title agent, here to serve the investor community. So subscribe below, share on social media. Thanks for watching this episode. We'll see you on next week's episode. As always, I look forward to seeing you at the closing table.